How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. I'm sure many of you have already forgotten about Dwight Howard and what happened to him. He only played 9 games this season for the Wizards, banged up by injuries. 10 years ago, he was one of the most promising superstars in the league and was supposed to be one of the best players this decade, but he's been an absolute disappointment at all levels. With that said, here's how Dwight Howard's NBA career collapsed. Drafted first overall, the 6'10 big man was one of the most anticipated players in the 2004 draft. Easily did become the best player in a below average draft class which featured Andre Iguodala and Luol Deng as one of the best players. Lived up to the hype his first couple seasons, who needed to develop more of a low post game. Howard was everything he was expected to be during his first 8 seasons. Put up 12 and 10 along with 1.7 block shots as a rookie, making all rookie first team, was the face of the Magic franchise. After 28 year old Steve Francis was traded to the Knicks in the middle of the 05-06 season, lost a step in his game. The Magic Center tasted a little bit of success by his third season in 2007. Average 17 and a half points, over 12 rebounds, nearly two block shots, making his first ever All Star appearance at 21 years old. Even making All NBA third team, put up 20 and 12 in the All Star game, putting the world on notice. In the discussion amongst the best centers in the league, was swept by the Pistons in the first round, putting up 15 and 15. But Howard's future was looking bright. Continued to improve, average over 20 points, led the league grabbing over 14 boards, playing all 82 games his first four seasons, led his team to. 52 wins in 2008 under newly acquired head coach Stan Van Gundy who built the team around Howard, surrounding him with sharpshooters and stretch forward Rashad Lewis, point forward and lethal shooter Hito Turkoglu, Keith Bogans, Maurice Evans and starting point guard Jameer Nelson. At the time, he was one of the most beloved players in the game, fell snubbed in the dunk contest the year before for his thicker dunk where his hand reached 12 and a half feet, put on a clinic in the 2008 dunk contest, famously known for his superman dunk, dressed up as a hero, it was one of the most impressive displays by any big man in the dunk contest. Contest. Earned his first ever playoff series win that season, knocking off Chris Bosch's Raptors in 5 games, putting up 22.5 points, over 18 rebounds, along with 3.8 block shots, before losing to the contending Pistons in 5 games. Was arguably a top 5 player in the game in 2009, behind Kobe, LeBron, D. Wade, and Chris Paul, had his best run in the 08-09 season, leading his team to 59 wins, making all NBA first team for the second straight season, as the best center in the game, won his first first ever Defensive Player of the Year award, finished 4th in MVP voting as the most feared rim protector. Howard alone was the reason why Orlando was such a great defensive team, had no other all-stars on his team. Jameer Nelson also missed 40 regular season games that year. Impressively led his team to the finals, putting up 26 and 13 in the conference finals against 24-year-old LeBron and the Cavs, closed out game 6 dropping 40 and 14, only to lose to Kobe's Lakers in the finals. Struggled to overcome Gasol and Bynum, shooting under 50%, only averaged 15.4 points, choked away two clutch free throws in game 4, costing his team the game, still had a lot of flaws offensively, not aggressive enough demanding the ball. At the time, Dwight was only 23 years old, looked upon as the future of the NBA, many polls and experts decide which players would they build a franchise around for the next decade. Shockingly, Howard was number 2 behind LeBron James. While James being the face of the NBA the entire decade, winning 3 titles, Howard's pretty much irrelevant in today's game. After the 09 finals, Howard went to Magic GM Otis Smith and wanted a scorer to play along with, so the team went out to get a past his prime Vince Carter, mistakenly let Hedo Turkoglu walk in free agency, the second most important player on the team, the Cavs even made a move to get 37 year old Shaquille O'Neal, having the size to match up with Dwight because of Howard's dominance in the postseason against them. Unfortunately, the Cavs and Magic didn't meet in the 2010 playoffs, as the best big men at 24 years old should have been averaging at least 22 a game, but Howard only put up 18.3 points, always called for offensive fouls and constantly being in foul trouble, his chemistry didn't fit well with Carter. Despite still winning 59 games, Orlando was no match for the Celtics losing in an easy 6 game series. Carter was then traded in the middle of the 2010-11 season. The team brought back Hedo, who was already 31 years old and lost a step in his game, swapped Rashad Lewis contract for Gilbert Arenas's. Howard 
had his best statistical season, putting up nearly 23 points, over 14 rebounds, won his third straight Defensive Player of the Year award at 25 years old, leading Orlando to 52 wins, finished second for MVP that season, but disappointingly lost to the Atlanta Hawks in the first round in six. A disgruntled Howard grew impatient with the team's lack of consistency, during the lockout, had issues with the front office, had attitude problems leading to his frustrations, lacked leadership. During an April 5th interview with the press, head coach Stan Van Gundy told the media Dwight wanted him fired. Howard himself interrupted the whole thing, wrapped his arms around his coach, claiming the news was false. That was the beginning of Dwight Howard's career downfall, started having back problems which ended his season early. Van Gundy was later fired after the season and GM Otis Smith agreed to part ways with the organization. A couple months later, Howard decided to go public, allegedly sent a bunch of private messages to a former AM Way Arena employee by the name of Marquis Randolph, who showed the world what Dwight said, was angered by how the magic drew him under the bus. Howard was finally traded to the Lakers in August, having the chance to play with all time great Kobe Bryant, paired up with Pal Gasol in the front court, and 39 year old Steve Nash. The team looked absolutely stacked on paper, but Howard simply couldn't handle the bright lights of LA. Didn't improve much on his game, continued to rely on his jumping ability, was terrible with the pick and roll. At 27 years old and supposed to be in the prime of his career, Howard only averaged 17.1 points, was pathetic missing late game free throws, choking over and over again, didn't have the winning mentality, having a 17 and 25 record overall. It was all Kobe who single handedly carried the Lakers to the postseason before touring his Achilles. Howard continued to embarrass himself and the franchise, was swept out the first round to San Antonio, lost his cool in the first half of game 4, getting ejected, his lasting image with purple and gold, with all the Laker great centers in the past in George Mikan, Will Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Shaquille O'Neal, they all won championships. But Howard couldn't even win a single playoff game, lost by double digits, every one of them. Not being able to live up to his expectations, the Mamba mentality was too much for him. Decided to bounce in free agency, signing with Houston as the Rockets celebrated in joy, expecting Howard to bring them a championship, pairing him with James Harden. In the first night of the regular season in the 2014-15 season, Kobe took offense to Howard, drawing his elbows after securing a rebound, called him soft amongst other things, says he's a teddy bear. I tried teaching Dwight, I tried showing him, but the reality is that when you have a perception of what it is to win a championship, and most perceptions of what it's like to win are a very outgoing, very gregarious locker room where you pick each other up and your friends all the time. That's the perception, and I think that's what his perception was of what the idea is. But when he saw the reality of it, it made him uncomfortable, and it's very tough to be able to fight through that to deal with that challenge, and I don't think he was willing to deal with that uncomfortable and combative nature. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar later shared his thoughts with Laker Nation in 2017 about Dwight's tenure with the Lakers, saying he didn't want to do any work, went on first take in October 2013, called out Dwight on his lack of basketball IQ and not having a go-to move, blowing his opportunity to work with arguably the greatest center all time with the most unstoppable move. Dwight would certainly still be useful in today's NBA if he would have put in the work with Kareem, blew his chance. And things didn't work out in Houston either, thinking he was going to be the star of the franchise, James Harden was emerging into one of the league's best players. The game started to change from being guard oriented, Golden State started becoming relevant, and the league was more guard driven. In his three seasons with the Rockets, the big man averaged 16 points, 11.7 rebounds on 60% shooting. Okay numbers, but never reached his full potential. The team won 54 to 56 games his first two seasons, making the Western Conference Finals in 2015, but 2016 was an absolute disaster, never changing his game and being upset about not getting more touches in the post, Harden was sick of Dwight's attitude, convinced management to play young Clint Capella more. The locker room was so divided, separating Harden and Dwight. An anonymous player said, when you come here, you have to pick a side between those two. Dwight was declining on both ends of the floor, while Harden was only getting better, so the team made the right choice, siding with Harden. The sad part was, Dwight was coached by one of the best post players in NBA history and Kevin McHale, and had Hakeem Olajuwon on his side. But it's obvious he didn't put in the work despite having so much guidance from two of the best post players we ever seen. Not to mention he also had Patrick Ewing as an assistant coach in his early days with Orlando. As soon as Howard left, the Rockets locker room became significantly better. The team 
was way better without him. Harden was better, and so was everything else about the organization. Howard signed a three-year $70.5 million deal with the Hawks, which was branded as a homecoming equivalent to LeBron's return to Ohio. Well, not quite. According to ESPN's Zach Lowe, Dwight would give speeches before games, demands post-touches, and doesn't rotate as hard as he could. Everyone was sick of his goofiness and jokes. Average 13 and a half points, 12.7 boards in his lone season with Atlanta, was mostly on the bench in the fourth quarter during crunch time. Former teammate Dennis Schroeder said, Dwight only played hard four games a year, all against his former teams. Hawks players couldn't wait for Dwight to be gone, also cheered happily after he was traded. The Charlotte Hornets would unfortunately have to deal with the Dwight problem. The Hornets didn't improve with him on the floor. Winning only 36 games, retired NBA champion Brendan Haywood said the Hornets locker room did not like Howard. Guys were just sick and tired of his act. Simply because of how he goes by his business day to day, hard to deal with, doesn't accept responsibilities, cries a lot, has bad tendencies, and awful body language. All these things contribute to why he was shifted out of Charlotte and people were just sick and tired of him. Haywood, who's an NBA analyst, played for the Hornets in 2012-2013, also has ties with Kemba Walker and Michael Kidd Gilchrist, whom both played on the same team, played his college ball at the University of North Carolina, having ties with Marvin Williams and Marcus Page, who were both on the same team with Dwight. And it only took a few months for the Wizards to figure Dwight out, who was an absolute mess, absolutely useless this season. Started out with his corny joke at the press conference, no wonder why many former teammates didn't like him. Still deal Dealing with his off the court drama and the lawsuit recently denied his allegations. Howard only played 9 games this season, underwent spinal surgery, hasn't played since his hamstring injury, has a $5.6 million player option to return to the Wizards next season, but his play won't make much of a difference. Now at 33 years old, dealing with multiple injuries combined with his lack of desire to win from not getting along with his teammates, being bounced around like a hot potato the last couple years, Dwight Howard has been the laughing stock of the NBA and all he can blame is himself. After he was traded from Charlotte, the Nets wanted no part of him, quickly bought him out. Appearing in memes and comments throughout social media, all for the wrong reasons, now that he's older and a huge distraction, constantly getting bashed for non-basketball reasons, it's likely Dwight Howard's NBA career will continue to go downhill from here. From his Dwight Maris exit with Orlando, to Kobe calling him soft, not getting along with James Harden, even hated by his hometown team the Atlanta Hawks, to having other issues. From being one of the most loved players 10 years ago, leading the NBA with over 3 million votes for the 2009 All-Star game, to being one of the most hated players 10 years later, nowhere to be found, his lack of leadership and goofiness, given his incredible talent, is why he will be forgotten. If it wasn't for his immaturity, and if he was willing to just change his game a little bit, Bit, Houston might have won a championship by now. I won't be surprised if Dwight Howard gets bounced out of the NBA within the next two years. It's clear he's been a locker room cancer ever since he left Orlando. Howard never truly reached his full potential. His accomplishments his first eight seasons with Orlando will get him into the Hall of Fame. What do you guys think about Dwight Howard's NBA career? Is he the most forgotten former superstar this decade? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love all of you. See you next time.